Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a small video about how to run the ECMAScript specification or you know, how to debug it uh, by running some engine, right? So it actually starts with a backstory. So Harish here, uh, he posted uh, like a snippet on LinkedIn asking that what will be the value or the result. So the question was, what if I do array double equals not array, right? What will this print? Uh, the you know, normal expectation would be that if I am sort of you know checking with array and then the opposite of array uh, it should be false but as it turns out the answer is true okay so how does that work now definitely a lot of people try to actually explain it in a very good way like uh, multiple people did it so Jonah was uh, I think uh, also explaining it very well with you know trying to go through all the steps and saying that which steps it should take like by looking at this ECMAScript specification right uh, so this kind of explanations I think help a lot because now you are not just looking at some snippet and trying to guess the results but you are also trying to kind of understand the internals right but one problem with you know just going through a text like this so for example uh, if I go to the abstract equality comparison section in the specification uh, it looks like this okay so this is uh, like this is like a mammoth piece of text right it's, it's very hard to understand for someone uh i don't know who is who cannot debug this mentally or who is like new to this thing right it takes some time to get used to you know reading this text and kind of keeping a mental stack trace of what is going in where right because you can't really run it you have to only read and kind of guess that okay i guess you know it goes through this line so for example, you know, when you start with array equals not array, so maybe not array is a binary value, right? It, it will become false now. So when it says if type X is the same as type Y, uh, we know mentally that, okay, it's not true. So it should go into the next steps, but you can't really see it as a code, right? You, you kind of have to guess that, okay, uh, what does this thing return? Uh, you cannot just see what the value of this thing is, right? Like if you are debugging some code, uh, you can go into the things you are interested in, but you can skip the other things. So all that, uh, you know, benefit is not there when you're reading just some text because you can't really run this thing, right? So that's the point. How do I run a specification so that I can understand it better? I can show it to others or I can, you know, uh, basically do it easily uh, rather than just understanding a lot of text. So how do I run a specification? Right? Of course, the answer is, you know, you can't just run some piece of text. Uh, it doesn't directly come with its own implementation. But the good thing is that there is an implementation which is called uh, Engine 262. So this is a GitHub project. I'll put the link. But what they have basically done is they have implemented the ECMAScript specification text uh, as, you know, you know, using following the text, they have implemented a JavaScript engine which is written in JavaScript okay so this is a javascript engine in javascript that means you need some runtime like node.js to run this but you can still consider it to be a very you know simplified and easy to understand version of uh, v8 like the v8 engine in our chrome so uh, i don't want to go through the theory but if you actually look through this that's uh, exactly what they're doing so the main goal of this project is to you know make it easy to understand the specification by running it but that basically means is that if i find something in the spec i should be able to easily find it uh, in the code here and the code should look kind of similar like it should be able you know easy to connect between the text uh, and this code right so that I, I can easily understand it it doesn't try to do a lot of optimization uh, you know at the expense of the other goals so it is not very optimized like VA, it's not written in a native language, like you can say it's written in JavaScript. Uh, but the good part is because we are JavaScript developers, this is going to be very easy to understand for us, right? So uh, let's see how to, you know, uh, like understand some piece of code using this in Intrusion C2. So how do I set it up? So the approach I followed is, you know, I just git cloned it uh, from here and let me move to my VS code. So this is what it looks like. I have literally just git cloned the whole repo here. Okay. I have like made added some settings and stuff, but for most purposes is the exact same thing that you will find uh, in the repo. So this is like a little bit old of a clone, uh, not the current version. They had like some changes in between, 
but it's still you know the majority should be the same okay so now how do i you know uh, set it up how do i how do i import this kind of code and run my you know own javascript within this engine okay so i've just set it set up a file here and uh, you can consider this to be a bit of a boilerplate code uh, but how do i get this how do you set all this up right uh, how do do how did i know how to you know set up the basic bootstrap code so if you actually go to the project repo and right here there should be some setup code yep so this is basically the file so this is the you know basic setup code that you kind of need to copy paste in your uh file okay so only one thing i have changed is uh here they ask you to sort of globally or you know uh install engine 262 as a npm dependency and then you can like require it and uh, set up some agent and realm so a basic way of thinking is you know your realm is like your outer environment where this javascript code is being run if you think of it right uh, in your browser you have a lot of extra apis which are not directly part of the javascript runtime so uh, what i mean is let's say you know uh, you have console you can do console.log so that's not something which is defined in the javascript specification but this is something extra that your you know browser environment gives you so if you are setting up your own engine you can also you know give these extra variables functions global values which can be used right uh, and that's exactly what it is doing here so this is important because this is something we're going to use so because we don't have any console.log uh, within the engine when you run some code within the engine you have to set up your own kind of console function okay so here we are doing it the easy way so we have defined like a print function which is being added to the global object okay uh, you can like try to understand what this is doing basically what it is doing is let's say if we do print of a number two it will convert that number to a you know proper string because internally here the arguments that you get within the function is going to be like a number wrapper so that number wrapper is like not a javascript wrapper but something the engine uses if you use inspect that will convert it to a you know logable string like this will basically give you a string too which is you know much more easier to print out so you can just you know use like node.js console log to print it out and uh, our function print here returns undefined okay and then we are basically uh, sort of injecting it into the global object saying that hey global dot print equal to this function okay uh, what that means is that when you are running our script uh, we have to write print something instead of console.log something and the last thing is uh, ignore this internal like string okay what it is basically doing is uh, you can do realm dot evaluate script and then put your own script as a text okay so this is the code it's going to run uh, you can put any you know valid uh, plain javascript code here so let's look at what this uh, looks like in our own setup so i basically copy pasted from there uh, removed some of the setup code okay and this is like for a little bit older version of uh, the engine 262 so the setup code might look like slightly different but it's essentially the same thing okay so the first thing i've done is i have uh, imported engine 262 from my local build here okay uh, because I, I have like already cloned in into 62 what I'm going to do is I can just run the npm build command and within a few seconds uh, you know my in 62 distribution should be prepared uh, within the dist folder and that's exactly what I'm doing I'm importing in into 62 from my dist folder okay. so that means I can also like make some changes to in into 62 and also a uh, benefit of importing it locally is that this vs code debugger and source maps work much much better when it's like within your project but you know if you, if you import it from node modules uh it becomes very hard to put a breakpoint within the engine 262 raw files so so this is the setup i prefer uh you know just keep it locally build it there and um, import it locally cool then you have that same basic setup code uh, console log print and this is the final thing okay so you have realm dot evaluate script uh, so you like if you remember javascript actually has two things like scripts and modules uh we are just going for scripts because that is easier to you know run uh, you cannot do import and stuff here but uh this is like much easier to uh understand okay 
So what you can do here is, let's say if you want to see what the value of uh, this code is, you can put this code as a string here and try to run it. Okay. Now, how do I run this file? Uh, so you can have it set up in a different way. I think the way I'm going to show that's also easy. So you go to like uh, in this console section, in the terminal section in VS Code, go to plus or maybe not here. Yeah. So you can do create JavaScript debug terminal. Okay. So this means now if I run a node command here, uh, it will automatically get attached to this thing. Okay. It will automatically get attached to my VS Code. Uh, that's what I want because I want to debug within this file. I want to run this file in Node.js, but I also want to put a debugger here. See, I have put a debugger right here. So now if I just do node thing is called try slash try in intrusive.js and run it, uh, it should get automatically attached to the debugger. Yep. And see, it has stopped on this line. Okay. Cool. So let's minimize this. And let's try to go inside it so uh, this evaluate script this is like a overall function and you will see a lot of like internal functions within this okay so evaluate script goes in here uh, you can all use all your debugging functions here right so you can go through this uh, i see that okay it's going to run within this function and going to call this evaluate script function let's pause there again go within it and you have to basically follow this whole you know step by step till you reach the point or the file where you want to look for right now how do i find uh, i want to stop right here because you know this is going to go through a lot of functions uh, to give you an overall idea of how indian 262 works it's going to first parse your script and the parser it is using is called acorn okay so that is that is a very common parser acorn uh, so it's going to basically parse the whole thing through this and see what the is you know, uh, return value is so i guess if you open ECMAScript's code uh the body is going to be like this yeah this is like a ast so you get your you know expression statement which contains a binary expression uh, which contains an array expression right if you remember our code uh, you should be able to connect that it's a binary expression like equals equals and within that you have a array literal so that's the ast that this is representing um and after that it's going to basically you know evaluate that thing okay so it's script evaluation is going to even evaluate it but again the problem here is if we you know keep going inside and inside uh, uh it's going to very get very hard to find the file which you want so let's uh, try it in another way right let's try to find the file first put a debugger here uh there and try to stop okay and Another thing is like I told about the AST, right? So how, what is a good way of uh, seeing the AST in an easier way? So you can go to this website called astexplorer.net. I'll put the link below and there you can paste whatever code you want to run. And this will tell you, uh, you can choose the parser here. So if I've chose, you know, chosen Acorn, it will tell you how the AST should look like. So you can see that my overall thing is an expression statement. Within that, you know, this, this expression is a binary expression. So binary expression. My left hand side is an array expression. So like this. Uh, maybe what you want to do is like not this, but this. So yeah. Uh, sorry. So my left hand side is an array expression. My right hand side is a unary expression because it's like not of something. Okay. So that's a unary expression. And within that again, you will find that my operator is not and my argument is just an empty array. Okay. So this is a idea of the AST. This is what you will need because when you go through the file, right, you will, you will probably try to search for, okay, where am I handling an array expression? So that's why you kind of want to know about the AST. Okay, so this is one part. Uh, another part is for how do we find this file, right? How do I find the part where, uh, you know, equal equals or where not is getting handled within the code? Okay, so let me try to show you a few ways. I just try to use whichever way works the best for you okay cool so what's the first thing so, uh let's say you know at this point you have like three things in your hand you know what code you're going to run and you have a rough idea of you know what uh what is going on within this code so that will give you some idea of where to look second thing is you have the specification right and the third thing is you have basically this whole piece of code uh this whole engine so try to find as best as possible 
so that you can connect the dot between these three things okay so let me try to show you how to find uh, double equals or triple equals let's say i'm at start of the specification uh, a basic way would be i can search for double equals uh, but i can't find it okay so another way can be i can just go like this is a special kind of search which searches i think within this index uh, i can just go to a normal you know browser search and just search for like equals equals and that's actually takes me to some useful useful place so this is actually talking about what happens to equal equals uh, within numeric types so because like uh, to, to give you some context right we have kind of two kinds of numbers now number type and begin type so this is like a generic way of saying uh, what will happen to both of them okay so uh, basically what you have seen here that okay you know if it is any of these four kind of uh, operators that you are using then it could be like defined in this area okay you equality operators or strict equality comparison so if i go here now i have reached the correct section okay uh, what can be another way of finding it now we know that this double equals should be called as something related to equal so you can just search for like equal and see i'll basically find the same sections okay i'll at least reach the same region uh, where it is defined so cool so let's now i have reached this region right i, I have found uh, in some way or the other how where it is located in the text now how do i find it in the code the good thing is in the code they have tried to reference back to like uh, the specification text uh, section uh, usually using uh, sometimes using these numbers but that number can get like uh, wrong uh, you know it can change over time so you can look at the permalink also so click on this permalink uh, that gives you the whole url and just take this section like after the hash so sec equality comp uh, operators fine now if i go to my code base uh, you know in your vs code you can do command shift f uh, that will give you like global search and i can just put the name of the section right seek section equality operators and see that gives me these two files right that's good right so if i click on this i have effectively reached the section in the code uh you know where where uh, that thing is going to be implemented so i hope you get the idea now uh, that you know if i if i found the code first i can like take this hash and like I, if i found the code first right let's do this i i can copy this hash um i can go back to my uh pick and i can put it in the url directly right so so that will you know take me to uh, where it is defined uh, in the text or I, if I found it first in the text, I can go to the code and uh, sort of find it here, right? So I think that's uh, very helpful. So at this point, we have found like where at least you know the approximate region uh, in the code and in the text. Okay. So now we need to uh, finally run it, and let's see what happens. So one thing is we have found uh, how equal equals work. The another thing we have to sort of look for is how not would work but again searching for not uh, doesn't give me much useful response even if i do for not not really useful uh, so let me try it the other way so i want to find it within my code text right in the engine 262 so if i search for not here uh, that's going to give me a lot of things maybe if i put it in a string right maybe it would like find it somewhere and let's see this is what it is right there is a helper function called is unary expression with bang which is a very funny name but yeah uh, so but this sections like this is a helper which should ideally be used in some other part of the code which is you know like evaluating not so if i command shift f and like search for it uh yep i found this section which is using it okay so i can again put a, a debugger here so i want to put a uh, like i want to so i i should be able to like stop here and see what happens so we have found a lot of sections let's try to run it finally okay cool so we'll again run the same file uh let's go back to the file and let's make it the correct version so array equals equals not array let's try to run it hopefully it should stop at some point in the debugger and see this is where we reach right so we found this file which is using that helper 
and we have basically reached that section right uh, so now i can actually go within this function using this you know all the debugger controls that i have here uh, i can go within it and see what happens when you do not of anything so i go into it it says that okay if you have a unary expression fine uh, it's going to evaluate that and then it's going to convert it to a boolean and then see what it does after converting to, to a boolean if the value it got is true then it's going to return false and if it is like the other one if it is already false it becomes true cool so let's skip the evaluate so we know that uh, array expression will get evaluated to uh let's see if i do if I look at expression my value is an object value uh, that means you know my whole value itself is a array and what will it will try to do is it will try to convert that to boolean okay so what i can do is i can probably in the code base look for where to boolean is defined and let's see so you know use whatever skills you have to filter for the function right so now we have found two boolean and again i can put a debugger here and oop, see, it reaches right here cool so you can now go through the switch case or i can just uh, like eyeball uh, what it should happen and it will try to search for my type my type is just array if i go through this roughly uh, you know that it is not any one of these things so ideally it should reach the case object uh, which means that it is not any of the earlier case so let's put a debugger here and go through this line by line so yeah it does uh, you know uh, it does reach object and what this means is that okay you know, if this whole thing is object like it is an array uh, it doesn't matter if it's an empty array or array with values then the two boolean of this thing should be just the value true so if you remember right we are within this two boolean function so uh, again two boolean of a array returns me true okay so if i actually open a file right here you can look at this so i started with this piece of code array equals equals not array and that effectively becomes array equals equals not true right uh, we can look at it again but you already saw that you know this not is actually going to turn true into false so that means this becomes this equals false okay cool so let's get back to our code so we have found like what happens to the unary expression now what we need to look for is what happens to our double equals right so if you remember again uh, we found a file called i think equality expression if you go to equality expression you will see that it will reach here for all of these things uh, and it says that if my case is double equals then it should go within that so let's put a breakpoint again and see if it stops there right so i'm just you know continuing my uh, uh execution and it's basically just stopping there okay because you can see the operator here is equal double equal so it should go inside it so it it actually uh you know, reverses the order so my right value becomes the first one and the left value becomes the second one got it so that's why uh that's where it was so let's uh, go inside again okay so my left value is basically false now and my right value is the array okay cool so let's go through these things it's again a lot of if else uh, so that it will finally go into one of these so type x is not equal to type y it goes to the next line and then there is few conditions uh, you know if one of them is null undefined no what we're looking for is my x is uh, false and my y is a uh, array right so we actually want we can actually go through all of them we don't need to even think about it we can just you know step by step go through them okay so it doesn't match any one of these uh, it's still going on let's see okay so there is a statement which says that if my uh, x which is actually the right hand side so if my right hand side is a boolean then go into this okay uh, what is it doing it's again calling the same function but it is converting x to a number okay so if i go back to my code again what it will try to do is 
array equals equals two number of calls okay so intuitively we can say that a two number of a boolean becomes zero but but let's try to see okay let's try to see what the code is doing so what you can do is we can go inside this function and it should just go into two of two number of x yep so we have reached two number of x and my argument is just the value false okay cool again we have a lot of switch case uh if it is boolean if it is true then it becomes one else becomes zero so number of false two number of false becomes zero fine so let's get back here uh so now we have found that okay uh, this is going to be like this again go back to my code that means i have array equals equals zero cool. so let's try to continue and we have again a reached abstract equality comparison but my x here is zero and i think my right hand side is still the whole array so yeah it's still array equals equals zero now let's say it's again where does it stop you can just do all of them till it matches one of the right right so now it says that if type of x is either of all these you know primitive things so my type of x is already basically this is already zero uh, if that is the case then convert the other one to a primitive okay so that means uh, it will now try to do two primitive of this thing two primitive of array and it was called zero so let's try to go inside and see what two primitive does here So by default the hint of uh, like how to convert it that becomes default fine um and another thing then it will try to do is you know when it is con trying to convert something to a primitive uh with you know your custom types you can define the symbol dot to primitive which says how it should work uh, but i think that is not defined for arrays uh, let's just look it up quickly so if i have a array uh, I think there will not be any symbol dot to primitive. Yep, it's undefined. Uh, so what that means is, if we look through here. Uh, yep. So my exotic to primitive, uh, I think that's going to be undefined. Yep, it's un. Okay, it's no. Yeah, it's undefined. Cool. So my hint becomes number. Uh, fine so it's again going to go within the same uh, ordinary to primitive function okay and what does it do my hint is number right cool. my hint is number so then it will check it in this order it will try to do array dot value of uh, if not it will try to do array dot to string okay so you can just run it quickly here we have an empty array so array dot value of and it will if, if that is not doesn't give you a direct value it will try to do a dot the string okay so i guess it will just get converted to this string uh empty string let's see we got the method names uh it's going to go through all the method names and basically call it So which method is it going to call? Uh, I'm actually not sure at this point. It's the name. Okay, so it's calling value of first. So if you actually see this, you know, highlight is getting uh, moved to here. Uh, that's actually not correct. I think it's some problem with the source map. But um, yep. Uh, like what is going is actually doing some internal step and then coming here. So what it's trying to do is it will call value of and two primitive sorry value of and two string uh, whichever first gives you a non object result that's going to be taken okay so value of here gives me the array itself so that's not true uh, but for two string it gives me a string so that will get returned here the first one uh, didn't get accepted I again do a few steps hope we'll reach there so yep 
so the final the result you got here empty string and that that will get returned okay so what is the better way of uh, seeing this i not sure if this will work well let's go to debug console and we get some function called inspect yep so inspect is available so one way of seeing what uh you know what object are we dealing with internally you can do inspect of result and that gives you basically a string right uh, you might even want to do console dot like log of inspect uh that basically tells you that yeah this is just an empty string that we're dealing with and what was the method you want to see that what method did we call last time so let's see yeah so basically we call this method called you know to string this is one good way of knowing that what are you dealing with uh, this because this all becomes wrapper objects right so that's it so, okay so finally uh, true primitive is going to return the string so let's again go back code so that means it becomes like this empty string equals equals zero okay cool i hope this finishes up quickly <laughs> again we go to abstract equality comparison now we have a zero and an empty string okay so i think we are very close to the end close to the solution let's see which one it goes into cool so now it says if my left it's basically like right hand side so if i right hand side is number and left hand side is a string then go within it and then i think it will yeah it will just try to convert the string to a number okay so if i again go back to my code that means this will do to string of empty string equals equals zero okay <laughs> let's see what it does cool or i mean it's two number actually again go into it two number we have a string so i don't want to go into its details uh but basically this will become the number zero okay uh so string value returns the same thing uh you might or might not want to go into this function because this will be a complex function which can you know like uh compares it to a like makes a string into a number so we basically try to do here see the return value uh the return value is number with the value zero okay so now finally we have zero double equals zero if i can continue finally we have x is zero and y is zero right which means type of x equal to the type of y so cool we finally get to go into strict equality comparison and if we go inside that um let's see where it goes okay so if x is number or okay so if any one of them is a big int or number it goes into this number dot equals and if we see the return value itself it's true and i think that's it we just continue it will just stop okay uh now the thing is you you are actually not able to see it print uh, the value true what i can do is i can do print this thing and maybe i can just disable all the breakpoints if i remove all the breakpoints you should just be able to see that i run it once more it's just printing this value true okay so just to clarify you can put uh anything here you can do value is plus this this is value is true so that's it i hope you know it gave you like some idea of <laughs> how to go through this thing like engine 262 uh how to look at something in the specification and try to run it uh uh, you know remember sort of those things that whenever you are in the debug console right whenever you're looking at uh, something within uh you know the engine 262 your helper are these things called like there is a function you know called inspect so you can just write like inspect of any variable you are doing uh, that will be very helpful because now you can see like what is what will it do if i console logged it 
uh, else it is very hard to understand because even if you are looking at an array a wrapper internally uh, it's very hard to understand it that it's actually an array so i hope you know that clarifies a few things uh, now uh, you know you i hope you got the answer i guess jonah was actually right about it yep seems like it uh, or maybe not i think it does go into zero which he didn't do but yeah it's pretty close so <laughs> i you know i hope you like this uh, thing it became very long uh, but you know debugging itself is very messy i still try to you know uh, do it earlier and redo it now but i hope now you get some idea of you know how to do it uh, how to set up this engine 262 and run your own piece of code uh, and you know see how it works right uh, i think there can be a lot of fun applications with engine 262 but yeah it's up to you to figure out so thank you again and see you next time